Hi, I'm Julie Conover. My sense of adventure has always driven me to explore what's around the bend and beyond the horizon. At 23, I cycled through Europe for six months, thinking I'd cure my wanderlust. Well, it didn't work. Now I travel with a close-knit family of filmmakers, striving to convey the essence of cultures, the beauty of our amazing planet, and the magic of the journey. We've journeyed to a place where glaciers loom over crystal clear lakes and cows graze beneath snow-covered peaks. Where the main highway is truly the road less traveled. Where rivers run wild with salmon and trout and fishermen come in search of their nirvana. Have you guessed? We are truly off the beaten path in the Aysen region of Patagonia, Chile. A proud resident told me that when God made the world, he had an assortment of his best natural wonders left over. So he planted them all right here in tiny Aysen. I am in love with my region because it's such a strong nature, you know. We don't have culture here, we have nature. It's so beautiful and so powerful. You got ice on the top and the mountains, the lakes down below. We've got this beautiful forest, and then right behind us is the, the river. And they're the main ingredients of the, of the Aysen region. The Aysen region of Chilean Patagonia is just emerging from obscurity. And as the word gets out of its pristine beauty, it is slowly attracting more travelers. Getting to Aysen involves a flight into Santiago, a connection to Puerto Montt, a final leg to Balmaceda, and a short drive to Coyhaique, the capital of Aysen. Coyhaique is a young city set amongst rolling hills and mountain peaks. Modern development began only after the northern section of the highway was completed in the 1980s. So its charm is not in its architecture or historical significance, it's the rawness of the place. It's an undiscovered corner of the planet where locals still see travelers as guests, not as just another tourist. Well, the local brewery sounded like a good place to start shedding our jet lag. Not exactly what I expected a brewery to look like. Conservation-minded locals arrive with their own containers to be filled. This is a true cottage industry, and I'll bet the daughters of this family-run business are very popular at school. We're gallivanting amongst the hoodoos in the badlands of Alberta, where Canada's First Nations culture comes alive at Aboriginal sites like Head Smashed Inn Buffalo Jump, and her earliest residents are gloriously displayed at the Royal Tyrrell Dinosaur Museum. Triceratops. The First Nations people called this the place where the lake talks too much. We'll delve into Alberta's vibrant foodie scene in Calgary, where Tara is not on the menu, but her cousins may be. Come here, Tara. Hi there. What nice brown eyes you have. And what pretty ears you have. And you just burped. I heard that. <laughs> that was a buffalo burp. So lots of hikers here, it looks oh, like. Oh, yes. We are in the hiking capital of the Canadian Rockies. Really? Yeah, sort of the, the, the hub of the wheel. And then the trails off into the mountains. Let's go hiking. How big are the fish in the lake? Oh, mercy. Horumnumne means lake of little fish. I 
only a few minutes away from the chateau. The silence. Yes. Isn't it beautiful? It's a bit of, bit of medicine that literally the whole world needs. Yep. Music of nature. Ooh, here's our first wildlife sighting. What is that? A little critter in the weasel family called the pine martin. Oh. Yeah, mouse is his favorite food. So this is recycled mouse. <laughs> Our visit coincided with the fall rut, when bull elk spar and bugle to establish their dominance and attract females to their harem. That female there's got a radio collar on. The collars, I believe, are designed to drop off after about a year, and they can gather information uh, via the collar. Oh, they're, they're, oh, there's two young males and they're scrapping. They're tussling. They're right behind the trees there. In town, I've seen anything from children's bicycles <laughs> to, to Christmas tree lights to uh, lawn furniture, hammocks, on humans. Their, on their antlers? <laughs> stuck in the antlers. Oh, jeez. It was fun. It was oh. fun. Unless you're the human stuck in the antlers, it's not so fun. Yeah. It's Rocky Mountain Rodeo, we'll call it. You know, a lot of people think, ooh, bears. I'm so afraid of bears. Bears are something definitely that you want to watch out for, but the majority of incidents that happen are between humans and that guy right there. Here he goes, there he goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Can you hold this, Joe? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No, walk, walk, walk. Whoops. Watch yourself. He's just over here. Just over here. He gets the, he's made his point. The next morning, we woke to clear blue skies, ready to follow the famously scenic Icefields Parkway South. It's highly touted as one of the most scenic drives on the planet. It's about 130 miles of absolute beauty. It was uh, built between 1931 and 1940. It took an awful long time, but when uh, it finally opened up, it allowed a greater amount of people access to something that only the most adventurous of people could ever have, right? And you're gonna be walled in by mountains and glaciers. You're gonna have yourself a hell of a day. In Macau, we use more this one, small one. Ah, yes. Because very it's spicy. More, very spicy, yeah? See, this is the influence of also of the Portuguese colonies before, like uh, Timor in Indonesia, like Malacca before Portuguese colony, you know? Also in Goa. And that's where you get the curries. Yeah, it's one of the things that you have here in Macau very fluently. It's curry, you know? So here we have Joao's favorite. Mm. The cod... Codfish cod cakes. Codfish cakes. Codfish cakes. It's made. We cook codfish. You cook potatoes, onions, and garlic. So now we might have to order another order because Joao only got one. Okay, sure. <laughs> I need more. Can I this is um, bacalhau lagareiro. Roasted codfish with hot olive oil and garlic. We say that we can make 365 ways and make this of codfish. African chicken, it's a dish. It's marinated first with olive oil, garlic, onions, coconut milk, and a little bit ginger. Where is the name derived from, African chicken? Because in the Portuguese colonies, you have many Portuguese people come from Africa to Macau. They bring some dishes. One of them was African chicken. Here's to great food and great wine in Macau. So is it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Join the Passport to Adventure crew next time as we explore the southern part of Aysen, Patagonia. There is much more to see. Not often you can tuck an elk under your arm. I never thought I'd there be petting goes. a buffalo. <laughs> no. Well, there you go. New experience. Hello. <laughs> 
just slobbered me. Ooh, it's a hot one out here in Alberta. Me and my little lady, just wrestle them up. Come on, come on, little lady. Elk snot. So cute. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs>